what does it mean to your life? And the increase Thank you for your night. Thanks for braving the rain. We have Jay online, and Catherine is trying to get online, so hopefully she'll pop up here in just a second. In the interest of plot, go ahead and get going. Okay, so pledge allegiance, and then I guess maybe the next item is board member appreciation. This is board member appreciation month. I believe. It is, and you are very appreciated. So we have uh, our uh, like people in the bow yeah. lights, cool. uh, and also have brought some cupcakes. And if anyone, um, we didn't think there'd be this many people here, so it's certainly for anyone who would like cupcakes, you can put the board, and then uh, we do have. Um, we weren't able to get five of the same thing for the start of the night. So cool. we'll to pick ones and so get that home of appreciation. We've had some people here, uh, tired of service and, and dedication. We're showing how to get into that picture of the belt of life. Oh, that's about the way. Our human edible. I know, they're just three ingredients. Not bad. Yeah. Oatmeal, peanut butter, and pumpkin. My dog loves it. So thank you much uh, for the board on the support. No, oh, thank you. I appreciate that from the district, and also uh, thank you to fellow board members. It's a lot of time and effort, so thank you for your time. Um, real quick, Bruce, sorry to interrupt, but Catherine texts me and says, I think she's trying to use the phone, but she says, um, it says the meeting hasn't started yet. So is the Zoom meeting going? It must be going. Oh, maybe that's her thing. I I don't want to call. I, I'm here. I'll keep myself on sure. mute. Okay, sure you're okay. Well, you've just been appreciated for the January board member appreciation month, so you can take that one. Okay, uh, next up, uh, celebrating student success. We have, uh, I think, our wrestling program represented by Mr. Thorson. Is that, uh, I'm sorry. Is that you? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so would you like, yeah, come on up to come right here to this one? To the microphone, right. quick, please. Up on up. So you got to turn that on so we can get live stream. All right. Does that work? You can hear me okay? Mm -hmm. We can hear you fine, but so can you can use the microphone. Gotcha. Are we looking in the right direction? We <laughs> <laughs> ran here right after practice. Sorry for a little out of breath. We actually finished up practice today with some dodgeball. Yep. And uh, I had to participate so the kids could take their shot, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Fun to be here as a coach today, um, you know, participating in board meetings in a little different role. Um, we're excited to share some things from our wrestling program. Um, specifically, our wrestling program is a program that last year did not finish our season. Uh, we, we did not have enough participants to make it through the, the completion of the entire season. Uh, whereas at this season, we have 11 wrestlers and um, have participated in multiple tournaments, and we have some uh, wrestlers doing some great things. Uh, this summer, we were able to do uh, take advantage of the grant that was available for, for students to participate. And we actually had over 50 participants at our camp, um, which brought in some good funds for us, which has helped because we've, uh, to this point, um, done three overnight trips uh, with tournaments that require travel or the multi-day tournaments. And those funds are funds that allow us to make those types of trips happen. Um, but I'm here with two, our two captains of our team, Lexi Newman and Robbie Stockton. I'm going to give them a chance to kind of talk about wrestling and some, some of the, um, their perspective on our sport and how our season is going, and then I'll wrap up with some comments as well. So, Robbie, you're going first. It's a really fun sport. It's hard work. You have to do a lot. You have to run a lot. <laughs> a lot of push-ups, a lot of sit-ups. Um, really fun. How does a tournament work? When you go on for a couple of days, is it multiple matches then? Is that even the right thing? Yes. Yeah. Multiple matches going on. So each uh, category of weight, so lowest, highest, there's a time. It takes a very long time. <laughs> but how many matches would you participate in over one tournament? We have to set times. So one. Yeah. <laughs> kind of how many people are in the weight there. Hi, Lexi. Um, I've been wrestling since like third grade and my first year on the high school team. And it's been a lot of fun. I've been enjoying going to all the tournaments and stuff. We've gone to like five tournaments and I've taken first in every tournament. Oh, 
planning to go to state. I really want to even play just even as a freshman, that would be a big deal. I was planning on wrestling in college and hopefully getting a scholarship later. Nice. Thank you. So we're putting Keith on notice that we need a noise parade ready. And we're heading to state, right? Yeah. yeah. When's the state come out? Nope. February 24th and 25th for our yeah, for our age group. Month of training. So they'll have a district tournament, which is uh, the girls have their own district, uh, which is comprised of all the schools that are in uh, Division 1A through 4A. Um, and they split it between the southern section and northern section, and that's how they qualify for state and district tournament. Uh, for the boys, we're in a special district that has our, our teams together, and they'll have a district tournament on the 10th and 11th of February, and they need to place in the top three of that tournament to have a chance to go to state. Uh, so making it to state is no small feat. It is uh, it, it takes a lot of preparation, and um, there's a lot of wrestlers out there, and, and even our league, that they've been doing it since they were kids. Um, and uh, their, their experience shows, but we're hopeful for our program. Um, this is kind of, like I said, from the growth from last year of, of, of having the struggle and disappointment of not finishing the group we have now and our middle school program starting to get the first groups of, of athletes that have come through our Chesco Bears community group, um, our, our community wrestling club. And next year, we're looking at the incoming sixth graders and several of them have already wrestled for multiple years and they have 30 or 40 tournaments under their belt of experience. They're coming in as, as experienced wrestlers. Um, and so we're starting to see the middle school numbers increase. It translates into higher numbers for our high school program. Um, and, and we continue to see it grow. Um, and so we, we look, uh, you know, you doing the camp last summer was, was a good opportunity for us. Whether the grant's available or not, we're planning on continuing that uh, camp as a tradition for our high school athletes to get involved in helping to run that and, and help students who Maybe they're unsure or don't want to sign up for the club, or that's a big commitment, but they can come do the camp over the summer, try it out for a week at a much lower cost. And if it piques their interest, when the opportunity comes up in the fall, they can sign up. Um, so, again, our, our focus is on increasing participation in numbers um, and helping the success of our, of our athletes that are in the program. What's the cost of a wrestling in high school? In high school, it's the same as, as all other sports. They would sign up through family ID. Um, 65 or 85 something based on yeah the public speed. so they would do the sports fee and sign up for family ID. the sports fee is for each sport yeah same fee that each sport is right. any other questions about wrestling any other costs associated with wrestling at the high school level yeah. no we, we ask that students you know come with uh with their own wrestling shoes but in the past, some students can't, we, we work with them to provide them. We also have a lot of shoes get lightly worn because they're only allowed on the mats. Right. They're only allowed to, to be worn when they're wrestling. So typically they'll last several seasons or several years. So we have a we have a good uh, kind of storage system of donated shoes that we have available for, for athletes that can't provide their own. And we always work with families. So at the high school level, it's typically just that they cover that sports fee and then the rest is covered. Um, now we do expect that athletes in the program do help to fundraise. Because when we're looking to do tournament, you know, overnight tournaments and travel and those kinds of things, um, you know, they have to kind of give to the program to get that back. And you charge the survivors? Yeah, all the uniforms, our, our singlet, headgear, all of that's provided. They also get some nice warm ups and some, uh, you know, some cool swag that the kids like to wear. And, uh, some, like, yeah, you can wear it to school, right? Your jacket that keeps them warm, where I can throw on after practice and run yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you and good luck. Congratulations on your success. And yeah, we're looking for a state uh, send off here for you. Sounds good to me. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, next up is our student representative report. Mr. Walker is with us tonight. So the floor right. is yours, sir. Let's get this off the Okay. So this month, since we're at the semester, we're kind of just planning the rest of the semester out because there's not really much to do apart from prom and graduation, the really big ones. And it's always praise, I'm guessing. Yeah, it's right back <laughs> So let's see. The ninth grade is planning the spring dance, and uh, 10th grade is planning the talent show for this coming March. Uh, and the auditions are going to be held for that talent show February 8th and 9th. 
And then the 11th grade is finalizing prom right now. They changed venues from Jekyll Brewery to the SWAT uh, Activity Center. And that's where they're going to have their the dance. And they've ordered decorations and they're on their way. And then 12th grade, my grade, is finalizing the winter dance that's coming up after uh, this 28th of January, right after finals, just to kind of get the kids relaxed again after having a super stressful week. Uh, and then the entire leadership class is just preparing to sell candy grams for val Valentine's Day. And we have a spirit day ready to announce for the week of February 13th to the 17th. And the dress up days are Monday is sports attire. So sports gear from your favorite, favorite team, whether that's soccer, baseball, basketball, whatever it is. And then Tuesday is red and pink day because again, this is kind of Valentine's week. Then Wednesday, we decided to kind of go off and we did camo day. Hopefully that a lot of people will show up for that one. And then Thursday is night in or night out day. So essentially PJs or dress to impress. So you dress up fancy or you come to school in your PJs, whichever one you want. And then Friday is rhyme without a reason day. This one's a little bit more complicated. So kids have to pick a partner or they can just, uh, we're gonna print out a sheet where we're gonna have matching or rhyming outfits and then kids can choose whichever one they want to hopefully rhyme with someone else if they don't have a partner. And then essentially it would be like, um, let's see, I can't think of one right now, like Bob Ross and uh, Megan Fox. Those two, you, they would dress up either one of those to kind of, if they just have their names have to be kind of the same. You make me feel really old because I don't, I don't see the connection. Yeah, it's a new one. I didn't really understand it when the freshman proposed it. So I'm just rolling with it. Bob Ross and a pretty bird. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, <they have one. laughs> and then the counseling department is also going to like cooperate with us on these different activities throughout the week that we're going to have and the, since it's the designated school kind of seat and then finally we will be having our ASD meeting which we haven't had in a long time because we've been super busy uh, it's going to be held this Friday January 20th during leadership and we're going to talk about finances and just talk about spending as much as we are as like all these dances, fundraisers that we need to provide next year and to get all that money back or calculate if we're over the line or under. And then um, the student uh, uh, leadership council has not had a meeting because it got canceled last time, but hopefully we uh, plan to have it this next month that this Veritech is open and available. And that's all I got for you guys. So, <coughs> uh, thank you. Any questions? Chance to grill them a little bit. Thank you, sir. Appreciate the time. Um, okay. Uh, I don't know five citizen input. I didn't receive any blue cards. So I made one last call. Anyone like to have the opportunity to speak to the board? Opportunity is going once, going twice. Here. <laughs> All right, we'll just have a listening crowd here. Um, item six, consent agenda. Hear a motion from the board to approve the consent agenda. I will make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Okay, thanks. Any questions or comments on the motion to approve? Who was that? Janice. Janice. Thank you. Then Janelle second. Microphone on. Uh, sorry, any comments or questions on the motion? Nope. Okay, we're going around the horn for a vote starting online. Jay? Aye. Catherine? Aye. Thank you. Uh, Janelle? Yes. Denise? Aye. Aye. And Alan? Okay, district reports and information. Comments from Mr. Marshall. Thank you. Um, in your packet, the only thing I have uh, for this evening is um, it's a, it's initial summary information um, from our financial audit. And so overall, it was a clean audit. Someone sent a questionnaire, and I'm sure you know, did a uh, question. Uh, there, there were no findings. Um, why we don't have the full report, but we typically do, is there are words behind. So they submitted it to the state, so it doesn't impact our uh, finance. But they still need to finish up for the final audit to submit it to the state, state treasurer. So they submitted to ODE. So we got that like a 
extension or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they did. They have they have this new extension and they, 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 um, and that was largely because of those staffing challenges. And so um, we'll, we'll see how that in the near future that the full package. But they said, you know, here's what we have, and there's no intending uh, consideration. Um, so congratulations to Vivi uh, and uh, and the keyboard here for a great job on that. I hope that she was very persistent with uh, making sure that it was in line. Any questions? We'll have the full report with the auditor then. Yes, as soon as we get, uh, we will do that. Um, but we just that they were able to send me highlights, so we included them in the form to make sure that it's not formally uh, submitted. Okay, that makes yeah, sense. I can add to that. Um, sure. Lovely. So uh, typically our auditors present in February or March. We have a FIA quarterly report that's due in the end of this month, and they need to show that, or we need to show that we presented a clean audit. And so that's why you have those sub pages there. That's it. Did they have a modified opinion? And we have there's no issues with our grants. So there was no findings with our grants. Um, and they they pulled ESSER because that's one of our larger ones. And anyway, that's that stuff is what is in this report that we see tonight. I do want to add that there are 35 districts that have not even submitted to ODE, so their state school funds were held this month. So there's just so many more demands on, on the reporting requirements that the auditors are having a hard time and districts are having a hard time getting that stuff updated to the new um, requirements. So we're good. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. It will also be posted on um, our website too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this this version of it or the, or the full version? Yeah. yeah, I guess that was a question. Yeah, you'll get your nice pretty bound copy as soon as we get an email. Okay. Um and just kind of with a comment on the district reports. Um for the board's information. Zelly Middle School is separate here, bound, and then the high school just came via email to us not long before the meeting. So, take a look at that and give it a chance. Well done. Is the high school I haven't even opened it yet? <laughs> it's all, it's all <laughs> So does the board have any questions on, on those reports or the also the attached finance or enrollment summary reports? Okay. Sailing right along. Um, item number eight, action items. We have the second read of G B E A policy. And that was the one we were only reading the reference to. I'm trying to remember now why this got held. Or did it? No, we can still say it. We can still say it. Okay. So again, that's your probably, yeah, I recall this last time that was just a or the law update with the changes. Um, I'd like to hear a motion to approve the second reading the included policy. I will make a motion to approve the second reading. That's Janice for a motion and Janelle for a second. Any other comments or questions about the motion to approve the second reading? All right, to the phones, Jay. Yes. Catherine. Yes. No. Yes. Denise. Hi. And then I from Alan. Okay. Approval of our 2324 local service plan with our local ERC. And I think we have here in the nick of time. Uh, is it Paul? Okay. Paul. Yes. And introduce yourself. Yeah. Well, can I say hello for a second with me, please? If you don't mind, I'm going to have to ask you to hold the microphone so that you can hear me online to make sure it's on. 
Might be Good evening. My name is Paul Peterson. Uh, uh, so thank you very much for uh, having me here. So on behalf of uh, the Board of Directors for the South Coast ESD, I uh, just want to say thank you for the chance to come and, and talk with you. With me, uh, I'm joined by uh, ESD Board Member Bruce Levy. So thanks for, for, for coming along. Uh, and we're both here to uh, share a little bit about the, the local service program LSP and answer any questions you might have. So as an overview, every year the local service plan or LSP uh, gets reviewed and approved by the regional superintendents and then the ESD board and then the boards of each of the 10 school districts uh, within the ESD service area, which ranges from uh, Reedsport in the north down here uh, to Brooklyn. Uh, this uh, this local service plan on, on your agenda tonight is unchanged from the LSP you approved last year, uh, January 19th. Uh, this plan is reviewed by the area's 10 school district superintendents um, this fall, and they voted unanimously to approve the plan on November 17th this year. And then the South Coast ESD Board of Directors also voted unanimously to approve this plan at their December 13th meeting. Uh, so this LSP is designed to provide the maximum flexibility to each of the districts and how they want to use their ESD resolution dollars. And that the districts uh, choose from the menu of services what they need from the ESD, and we call those Tier 2 services. Uh, so altogether, the Tier 2 services comprise about 95% of the ESD resolution dollars, with just about 5% in Tier 1, or what we call core services, which are services that all districts get equally. Uh, those tier one services uh, include homeschool registration, audiology testing, birth to three evaluation, and the safe school program. Uh, so South Coast ESD is really proud to partner with your school district to help deliver the highest quality programs and services for students in a cost-effective manner, and I'm happy to address any questions you might have um, or uh, if I can't answer now, I'll follow up with Superintendent Marshall. Okay. I guess you answered my big question, which is unchanged from years past. And, 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 um, you know, I know in the past as a district, we've kind of slimmed down a little bit of what we kind of took and advantage of. How does that, I'm just curious how that compares to other districts. Uh, how do we compare to other districts? In that uh, you receive the largest amount of past to new dollars uh are just where we just transit the money through um uh, of our 10 districts uh, and, and probably one of the higher amounts in the state just because that's how our our local service plan is designed it just it really does provide the maximum flexibility to the school districts uh, there are some esds uh, kind of on the other end of the spectrum where the majority of the dollars stay at the ESD, and then the 10 or the 10 or 15 or 20 superintendents agree on what are the common set of services that they all want every district to have uh, uh, access to. In our system, um, it, 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 it works out. Um, it's just a different approach. Yeah. Uh, it's just sort of a menu driven approach. And uh, for the most part, most of the districts do access a lot of the same services. Uh, but then, you know, we'll have. Uh, uh, a district like like yours who uh, has other ways to get some of that work done and they benefit by having just the dollars come through so um, but I, I also want to I also want to be clear give a shout out to superintendent Marshall because he, he's, a, he's, a, he's an important part of our team in the, in the region so um, just because there are there's a different methodology here please know that he's a, he's a member of a team that, that, that cares about all of our kids and the whole team. So why do Brookie School District get the largest amount? Are we the largest school? No, but I'll, I would let Superintendent Marshall. So uh, I, a big chunk of it is, and, and we're we're constantly having conversations about, and, and, and I've had a lot of conversations with Paul. It's like, if, if we can make it work, we'd be happy to have more services from the MC. Um, probably the single biggest is just distance from local schools. That's been the, the big challenge over the years. I mean, they're based on uh, the most of us and what they get into the service. So it's it's difficult for them to efficiently provide the services that, you know, what we have in the past. For example, we've added on like when we couldn't find a speech language pathologist, you know, sometimes we might say, hey, we need one from you. And then we work those details out 
as part of that conversation. Um, they are providing through this process, uh, we do have some uh, assistance with the power school, which our student information system. Um, so they've hired a person with our support for that system and actually expanded our capacity. So we're constantly looking for those opportunities. It just can be really challenging because they're also facing the same labor market we are. I mean, there just aren't those specialists around. And so we're, we're, we're talking to the same people. So in, in my lens is, you know, if if, um, if they can do it for a comparable and we get a comparable service, it makes sense, you know, for, for a PS to do it so they help them expand their capacity. If they can, it just makes this process more to go through them than to go through ourselves, then it makes sense for us to do that to have that service ourselves. You just take the money. And yeah. Okay. And we're okay with that. Yeah. I, I mean, it's, it's truly a partnership uh, that's looking for ways to best serve students. And sometimes it just looks better this way, and other times it looks better when we pool our resources um, as a group of school districts. Uh, so uh, it, it's just kind of whatever works best for kids and, uh, for a service organization. There's, there's no profit motive at, at all for us. We just about Thank you for coming by. Yeah, I appreciate the drive. Oh, my pleasure. Uh, How was the washout? Oh, thanks, Kate. I came, I came down um, to, to Gold Beach uh, last Friday, and I, I had to go on the way down. I had to get through the mountain roads to go around the mountain. That was fun. Um, but on the way back, I got to go across the, the new route. So it's, it's much better now. I, I, I take the piece of paper now. Yeah, not only. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so we'll be looking for a motion to approve the 2324 local service plan. Second. That's Chanel with the motion and Denise with the second. Uh, any further questions or comments on the motion? All right, Jay? Yes. Catherine. Uh, <coughs> sorry, yay. There you are, thank you. Janelle? Uh, yes. Janice? Aye. And I from Alex, so thank you. Question, if it's Dee Dee or, sorry. Oh yeah, you're free to yeah. Yeah. You yeah. hit the road. Yeah. 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 Dry, so you are, yeah. Oh, I understand. Thank you for your time. Uh, do we need to approve the draft budget calendar and a first reading? No, it should have only been in the one. <laughs> but in both steps, need to approve. But, but on the action, uh, it's up to. Yeah, I don't. Prompts, there right? should only be one. Yeah. On, for an action item as well. To approve the draft. So, and just to call out, uh, May 23rd and 30th are Tuesdays, and apparently that's been a practice of just trying to say, we still okay with having them on Tuesdays. Um, that was established a while ago. Doesn't matter. Though. Yeah. Does it matter to everybody? Because it's what we have to like sure. the holiday. Um, and the time you need to Oh, I don't know if we put times. We typically, I think, set up just the same, 5.30. Which ones are the second and the second? Yeah, that's Well, Memorial Day is the one. So 30th, I guess you would that. I'm fine with that, as long as it's on my phone. Uh, okay, well, if everybody doesn't have a real issue, but we have printed in front of us, um, like a motion to a, adopt the 324 budget. Or just our first reading. Okay. We don't need to read the reading. Okay, so we can just go ahead and just adopt. Okay, a motion to adopt the draft 324 budget now. Second. Okay, thank you. That's uh, Janelle and then Denise with the second. 
I probably hit all the concerns here. So let's go to the phones. Jay? Yes. Catherine? Yay. No. Yes. Please. Aye. Aye. Here as well. Okay. Four questions and comments. I don't think we had anything under that number nine item tonight. Then number 10, key dates, calendar updates. We've got several things coming up on calendars. Um, February 1st is a work session meeting, the 15th is a regular board meeting. But we're still probably going to have to plan that dinner with the staff ahead of that. Yes. Right. Yeah. Then on into March. So any questions on that? Okay. Well, I guess with that, we will adjourn our regular session. Appreciate everyone's time today. Thank you. Two minutes here.